Hello students, welcome to Statics. I'm Dr. Stewart, and today we're gonna to do an example from chapter 2.4 to 2.6. Uh, this is a fairly straightforward example where we're asked to find the X and Y components of vectors F1 and F2 in Cartesian notation. So we need to find the X and Y components of each of these vectors in Cartesian notation. Now let's go ahead and look at the diagram that we're given and let's see you know what additional information are we given in that diagram. So we see that we have this pin connection and through the pin there are two force vectors that are acting, F1 and F2, these two vectors. Let's go ahead and write that F1 is a known with a magnitude of 200 newtons and it's directed 30 degrees on the y axis, right? All right, let's write F2 as a known, where it is 260 newtons, and it is represented on a 5, 12, 13 length ratio. So we're given this as length ratios of a triangle, its direction, right? So those are the knowns that we kind of have in this problem. And our unknowns are, are the things that we're asked to find. We're asked to find the X and Y components of each of these force vectors. Now, what does this mean? Let's take, for instance, the F1 vector, right? This F1 vector. We want to break it down into components that are directed along the Y axes and a component that is directed along the x-axis. And let's label these F1y for the y component and F1x for the x component. We could repeat that for the F2 vector to find F2x and f to y. So those are the four things that we're asked to find. We're asked to find F1x, F1y, and F2x, F2y. These components, right? Now, now that we've kind of identified our knowns and also identified our unknowns, the next step is to construct a free body diagram. And in fact, we kind of already did that. So let's see if we can maybe cheat a little bit here and copy over the sketches that we drew. Let's see, can we copy over? Let's see, copy down. So we need to create a free body diagram. That's where we free the body from its constraints and replace or remove all of the information that's not useful and leave only the things that we need. So in this case, we have that whole pin connection, right? We have the whole rod that's diagonal through the body. We don't need that. All we need is our origin, our knowns, where this was 200 newtons at 30 degrees, and this one here is 260 newtons on a 5, 12, 13 triangle, right? So we've created our free body diagram. We freed our body from its constraints and we simply focus on the things that are important. So now that we have our free body diagram and knowns and unknowns, we've got to think about how will we solve this problem? How do we actually go about solving it? And this one is simple geometry. We have these triangles. Three, you know, We have triangles where we have a known, which is alongside, and the unknowns are the X and Y components. We need to break these triangles down using very simple trick. Let's start with finding the F1X and F1Y scalar components, right? Where the F1X component here is directed in the negative Y direction, and we can, using you know basic trig, 
find that it is equal to F1 times the sine, so it is the opposite side, of 30 degrees. So we go ahead and put our 200 times sine of 30 degrees. We get 100. So that F1x uh, component is 100 newtons directed towards the left. Right? Let's continue the same process and find the F1y component. This y component is kind of adjacent. You can say it's an adjacent component. It's directed upward, so we'll say positive F1 times the cosine of 30 degrees. We plug our numbers in, put it in our calculator. We find the F1y component is equal to 173 newtons, right? Okay, we found F1x, uh, F1y. Now let's find F2x and F2y. So let's break down this F2 term. Let's start with F2x, right? The x component here. And then let's go ahead and break it down using the length ratios. Now, length ratios is fairly straightforward. If you have a triangle, so we have this 5, 12, 13 triangle. If we want to find the x component, then we need to do a length ratio with the x term of the triangle. Simple as that. So we want to find this f2x. We're going to find we're going to take the x directed length, which is 12, and we're going to divide that by the run term, which is 13. So we find f2x is equal to f2 times 12 divided by 13. We put in our numbers and we find that f2x is equal to 240 newtons. All right. Now let's repeat that same process, but let's do it for f2y term, right? It's the y term. We have our length ratios. We want to take the y length and then divide it by our run term. So we'll find that f2y is equal to uh, negative f2, because this, is, this uh, arrow is directed downwards, so it's going to be in the negative y direction, times the 5 divided by 13, the, so the y term over the run. We put our numbers in, we get negative 100 newtons. And then that is our f2y term. So now we've found the scalar notation value for the f1x, f1y, f2x, f2y terms. Now let's bring this all together and convert this answer into Cartesian notation, where we take those numerical values we have, we input the i, j, k notation to indicate the direction, and then we put positive or negative, positive or negative, to indicate the sense of that vector on the i, j, k directions, right? So we take that all together. We say our F1 term here, uh, F1, we've got negative 100, and we've got positive 173, right? If we put that together in Cartesian notation, the F1 vector is equal to negative 100i plus 173j in brackets newtons. Let's look at F2. F2 here, we have 240 newtons and we have negative 100 newtons, right? If we put that together into Cartesian notation, F2 is equal to 240i minus 100j, all in brackets, newtons. So now we've got our final answer for this problem in Cartesian notation. So uh, this example is fairly straightforward, where we're doing things where we're just taking a vector and breaking it down into its components and getting it into Cartesian notation. As we move forward, there can be even more complicated types of examples. Say you have two vectors, and you need to find a single resultant vector in Cartesian notation. Those type of things start to arise as we move forward uh, in this chapter and other examples. So uh, make sure you get this example down pat, and then I'll see you in the next example video.